All right, in this chapter we're going to um, expand what we know about the trig functions uh, to the whole unit circle, to the whole circle, to all four quadrants. In the first semester of pre-calc, we uh, focused primarily just on the first quadrant where everything was positive. Um, now we're just going to kind of branch out a bit. So you might recall from the first semester um, that we learned that for a given angle theta, if we kind of draw this angle out from the origin to where it intersects the unit circle, the unit circle being a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin, so that's how we know the coordinates of these points here. Uh, once we draw that angle out, the spot where it intersects the circle, um, those coordinates are defined to be cosine of theta and sine of theta. So for example, uh, at 90 degrees up here, I know that cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0 and sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. They're just the coordinates of that point. Um, we focus primarily on the first quadrant in the first semester, um, but now we're just going to branch out and uh, once we know the coordinates of, uh, or the values of sine and cosine, so the coordinates of those points, we can find the values of the other trig functions just by their definitions, right? Secant and cosecant are the reciprocals of cosine and sine, respectively. Tangent is the ratio, sine over cosine, and then cotan is the reciprocal of that. Um, so we'll start with this exercise here. We're, um, we're given the coordinates of the point at 30 degrees. So we know that the uh, at 30 degrees the x coordinate on the unit circle is the square root of 3 over 2 and the y coordinate is 1 half. Um, we can find the coordinates of these other points. So there's three other points here that we're going to focus on. Here, here, and here. And we'll do that by using the symmetry of the circle. So if I go over here in the second quadrant at 150 degrees, well, 150 degrees, we'll just notice is 30 degrees back from the 180. So this is, in fact, just a reflection across the y-axis of the point they gave us. That means that the x-coordinate is going to be uh, negative root 3 over 2, and that it'll have the same y-coordinate. So that's the coordinates of this point. If we move down here to the third quadrant, that is the angle 210 degrees. 210 degrees is 30 degrees below the 180. And that is simply a reflection across the x-axis of this point that we just found at, at 150 degrees. So uh, taking this point and just sort of reflecting it down across, it will have the same x-coordinate but it will have uh, the negative y-coordinates. The coordinates of this point are negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And then finally over here in the fourth quadrant, we can see this. This is 330 degrees, and that is 30 degrees below the x-axis in the fourth quadrant. And we could get these coordinates by using the fact that it's got to be the reflection across the x-axis of this point. Or equivalently, you could think of it as the reflection across the y-axis of that point. Um, either way, we'll find that it's got this positive root 3 over 2 uh, x-coordinate and a negative 1 half y-coordinate. So if I know values in the first quadrant, we can just use the symmetry of the circle to obtain values in the other quadrants. Um, we know, uh, because we know the coordinates of these points, um, that means that we also know the values of sine and cosine um, of these other angles of 150 degrees and 210 degrees and 330 degrees. I know that uh, looking at this point right here, that cosine of 210 degrees is negative root 3 over 2 and sine of 210 degrees is negative 1 half, and likewise for these other points.
Um, we know uh, a bit about, at least we can tell what the sign of, like S-I-G-N, whether it's positive or negative, of uh, these trig functions just by knowing what quadrant it's in. So this says, without using our calculator, what is the sign of sine of 320 degrees, cosine of 320 degrees, tangent of 320 degrees? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just note that 320 degrees is in the fourth quadrant. And uh, a point in the fourth quadrant, the x coordinate will be positive and the y coordinate will be negative. That means that sine of 320 degrees is negative because sine is the y coordinate. Cosine of 320 degrees, this is positive because that is the x coordinate. Now, tangent is not a coordinate, but if I remember how tangent is defined, is the ratio of sine over cosine. And I just realized that tan of 320 degrees, this is sine of 320 over cosine of 320. So this is a negative divided by a positive, which means that tangent of 320 degrees is negative. And I can do that all without finding the actual values um, and without plugging anything into my calculator. Here we're going to find the values of the trig functions of theta if the terminal side of theta passes through the point negative 4, 3. Um, all right, so there's a lot of, uh, if you look in the practice exercises, there'll be a few problems that kind of have this wording. Uh, we talk about the terminal side of theta. So in the plane, right, in the xy plane, when we draw an angle, it starts at the origin. And we're considering an angle drawn in standard position, so that means starting at the positive x-axis and going counterclockwise. Now they're telling us that the terminal side of theta passes through the point negative 4, 3. So this point here. So here's the angle theta. It is a second quadrant angle. We're going to be able to use the techniques uh, that we learned in the first semester of this course. Remember, in the first semester, we focused on the first quadrant. Uh, everything could be a right triangle. And in fact, that's what we're going to do right now is draw a right triangle in the plane. One of our favorite things to do is to just drop down a perpendicular. And what we're going to do now is focus on this triangle here, which is a right triangle, and this particular angle here, which I'm going to call alpha. We think of that as like a reference angle. A reference angle is always an acute angle measured from the x-axis only, never the y. And it's a way that we could think of an, a given angle theta in terms of this acute angle. Now, I know the measurements of some of these sides here. Uh, since it passes through the point, since that is the point negative 4, 3, the y-coordinate is 3 means that this uh, vertical length is 3. The x-coordinate is negative 4 means that this length overall, like as an absolute length, is 4, but I'm going to keep the sign on it, negative 4. That's going to help me get the, um, the right values for the trig functions. Um, so we want the values of the trig functions, and that always means all of them, all six trig functions. And in order to get them, um, we need to figure out what is the value of this hypotenuse, R. We're going to use Sokotoa, that right triangle trig. So we need the hypotenuse, and we'll use uh, Pythagoras to get it. So 3 squared plus negative 4 squared is equal to R squared. That gives us a 25 is equal to R squared, and then we want to take the square root. Now, we are allowing sort of negative lengths, right, when we measure or when we label the lengths of the legs of the uh, right triangle. R is always, however, going to be a positive value. So when I take the square root here, R is positive 5. I'm going to mark that down. And now we have all the information that we need. We're going to use SOHCAHTOA. So 
also sine of theta. Now we're thinking about this, we're using Sokotoa and thinking about uh, the angle alpha, but as long as I make sure that I've included the signs, like whether or not they're positive or negative on these um, legs, I'm going to be able to use Sokotoa and that'll actually give me the values for the angle theta, uh, not alpha. Alpha is an acute angle, so everything would be positive for that. But theta is our obtuse angle, so uh, we get, let's see, opposite over hypotenuse is 3 over 5. Cosine theta is negative 4 over 5, or negative 4 fifths. And tangent, tan theta opposite over hypo, uh, sorry, opposite over adjacent is 3 over negative 4, or negative 3 fourths. Now from these three, we can get the other three. The other three are defined just to be the reciprocals of these functions. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant theta is 5 thirds. Secant theta is negative 5 fourths. And cotan theta is negative 4 thirds. So our same techniques that we used um, when we did similar problems last semester um, in the, you know, for pre-calc 1 uh, we'll, we'll work here as long as we account for the signs of the functions, like whether or not they're positive or negative in the quadrant that we're in.